the Lord. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you so much for finding time to be with us this morning in person. And for those of you that are following us online, we thank you. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate your contributions and your feedback. They are quite encouraging. And we thank God for the grace. It's my prayer that the good Lord will reward every one of us according to his purpose in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last Sunday, by the grace of God, our brother Honor share with us on a topic which he titled Jesus and you. Jesus and me. In his sermon, he submitted that as children of God, we should be like Jesus in everything as Christians because we carry God's DNA. We carry, carry Christ's DNA, just as we carry the DNA of our biological parents. Praise the Lord. It has been established that by your confession and belief in Christ, you are now a child of God. And as a child of God, you are expected to carry God's DNA. It will be a misplacement if we don't look like our father, or we don't look like our parents, as the case may be. There was a story of this man. In the morning before he goes to work, he will beat his wife. And he, the landlord will come and try to settle them. Once the landlord sets, steps in, he will just hiss and walk out of the house. For that morning, he will beat his wife again. It continues day in and day out. I wonder the wife, the landlord asks the wife, why is your husband always beating you? The woman said, her husband said, our child looks like you. Praise the Lord. The man was not confident that that child was his because the child looks like the landlord. Amen. Whom do you look like? Do you look like Jesus or you look like the devil? The Bible says that Jesus was addressing the people. He said, you are like your father, the devil, for he is a liar from the beginning. Praise the Lord. The question this morning is, who do we look like? Amen. In that message, he read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and he asked God to substitute the word love for our name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8, reading from the ESV, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Does not insist on his own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. And he said, love never fails. Amen. He made us to understand that love is the characteristic, is one of the characteristics of Jesus Christ. To be honest with you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and without deceiving myself, I don't fit perfectly into the description of love. Yet. I don't feel comfortable saying innocent is patient and kind. I am not bold to say that I am patient and kind. Innocent does not envy or boast. Innocent is not arrogant or rude. Innocent does not insist on his own way. Innocent is not irritable or resentful. Innocent does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices at the truth. Does innocent bear all things? Do you bear all things? Do I believe all things? Do I endure all things? 
in times of trials and temptation, am I able to endure? When the word of God is preached to me, do I believe and accept it? Am I able to bear with others? Say, love bears all things. I am not, but I am pressing forward and trusting God that He will make perfect those things that are not perfect about me yet. I don't know about you. You have to examine yourself and be sure that you are making effort which will make you perfect through the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I meditated on the topic last week, becoming like Jesus. And I started to ask myself a question. He read further from John chapter 13, verse 14. Sorry, John chapter 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35. This is a scripture we have always read. He said, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another by this. All people will know that ye are my disciples if you love one another. Praise the Lord. The only way we can prove to be true disciples of Christ, the only way we can claim resemblance to Jesus Christ is when we love. That is the proof of true discipleship, the proof of being children of God. Amen. While I was meditating on it during the week and I I felt guilty that I have not reached the position or demonstrated the character of love that Jesus expects me to demonstrate. I started to ask questions. What made the difference in the life of Christ? Praise the Lord. What made Christ different? Why was he able to achieve his purpose on earth? The Bible says he was tempted just the way we were tempted. He came, even though he was his God, he came in human form. As he lived on earth, he experienced the hardship that we experience, the challenges and temptations that we experience. But the Bible says, in all things, he did not sin. Amen. Why was he able to overcome? This was my question during the week. And that is what is giving birth to the topic I'll be discussing with us this morning. I'm sharing it because I want to be better and I want you to be better. I want us to grow together so that somebody will see us and say, this is a child of God. Amen. If you don't look like your father or you don't look like your mother, there will be suspicion. And people will begin to ask. Like the, the, the man will beat up his wife because the wife look, the, their son looks like the landlord. I wonder why I made that known to the man because they knew what they did. The trouble continued. Amen. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name to identify those weak areas in our lives and ask for the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to overcome. Amen. Further meditation revealed to me that what made this Jesus this thing what made him set aside? What made him able to overcome and fulfill God's purpose was the power of the Holy Spirit. I look at the lives of our fathers of old and the prophets, the apostles, and discovered that love, that the Holy Spirit was very uh, peculiar in their lives. Amen. Therefore, by the grace of God today, I'll be sharing with you a sermon titled, Becoming Like Jesus. Get your pens, get your papers, and take notes. Becoming like Jesus. And by the way, if you were not here last Sunday or you didn't have the opportunity of listening to that message, please go back to YouTube and listen to it again, and it will minister to you. If you want to become like Jesus, which is not negotiable. There are not two ways about it. 
there are no alternatives. If we want to be like Jesus our Father, we need the help and infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are we together? If we want to be like Jesus, let me say that again. We need the help and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The importance of the Holy Spirit in our walk with God cannot be overemphasized. Our Christian race is all centered on the Holy Spirit. The, more, the, the earlier we know this, believe it, accept it, and desire it, the better our work with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Just want to bring out the Father, creation that we have today, as it is, was created through the power of the Holy Spirit. That without the Holy Spirit, the universe, the firmament, all that we have today, will not have taken place. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, the scripture reads, it said, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He created the heaven and the earth. What happened? The heaven was perfect in its condition. In verse 2, it said the earth was without form and void. Amen. If you if you have a if somebody sends you a check and put a billion dollar in it, but cross it and said void, it means the check is useless to you, right? You get what I mean? You have a, a check of one million dollars, but it is voided. It means you cannot use it. Praise the Lord. So the earth was without form and void, and darkness was all over the face of the earth. Amen. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated light from darkness, and he called the light day, and called the darkness night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Praise the Lord. God created the world, and all its content through the influence and power of the Holy Spirit. Brother, establish the importance of the Holy Spirit how wonderful the Holy Spirit can be in our lives and everything that we do if we allow him. Praise the Lord. Today we talk about Jesus. I want us to know that Jesus was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit. You will find that in Luke chapter 1, 34 to 35. Luke chapter 1, 34 to 35. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? Amen. I don't know what problems you are facing in your life. I don't know what challenges you are facing in your life. As much as we know that it is not possible for virgins to give birth. So Mary asked the angel, How can this be? You are going to ask, how can I have solution to the problems that I have? Amen. And the angel gave his answer and said, and the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called the Son of God. My dear brothers and sisters, if you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, if you have the Holy Spirit to help you, every problem and every challenge that you have now will be resolved and God will take the glory. The angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will take control. And once this happens, the child that will be born, 
that you will give back to will become the Son of God. And so when we allow the Holy Spirit to take his proper place in our lives, God will take the glory. Things will be wonderful for you. Things will be pleasant. As difficult, difficult and as impossible as it is for a virgin to give back, but with the involvement of the Holy Spirit, in the case of Mary, things change. Amen. So you can begin to ask, how can this be? And let me tell you straight away, just like the angel replied, and what can happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Amen. If you are ready to receive the Holy Spirit and for the Holy Spirit to overshadow you, when the Holy Spirit overshadows you, it means He is in control. You are no more in control. You are no more getting suggestions and advice from every other source. You are just listening to the Holy Spirit to direct you. And once that is done, God's name will be glorified. When the Holy Spirit is upon you, what is ordinarily impossible or difficult will become possible and easy. And the result will be that God is glorified because he has been involved through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You get all those from that scripture because the angel told Mary that when the Holy Spirit comes, you will conceive, you will give back, the child will become the, child, uh, the son of God. Praise the Lord. So the results you are going to receive because you allow the Holy Spirit to be involved in your affairs will give glory to God. And everyone that hears your testimony will know that God was involved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to encourage you. I want, to encourage, I, want to, I want us to encourage ourselves to hand over our lives to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit take control. After the angel spoke to Mary that what was impossible was going to be made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit, the angel shared with Mary that Elizabeth in her old age a woman who had been described as barren is, was, was also pregnant. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was the same angel that visited uh, Mary that also visited Zacharias and told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to give birth. Elizabeth was old and Zachariah was old. It was impossible for them biologically to be able to perform the act of pregnancy and childbirth. But because God was involved, because it was a concern and man and part of through the part of God, Elizabeth was pregnant. Let's see when Mary visited Elizabeth, what happened. Remember that at the time Mary was going to Elizabeth's house, she was already endowed, she was already filled and overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 35. Amen. To 45. In those days, Mary rose and went with haste into the, country, into the hill country to, the, to a town in Judea, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Amen. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. Simply hearing the voice of someone that carries the Holy Spirit, the baby in the womb started rejoicing, started kicking. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit as well. Amen. Mary carrying the Holy Spirit visited Elizabeth, both Elizabeth and the baby in her womb also received the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
And she asks, and why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And she said, and blessed is she who believed that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Amen. Elizabeth received the Holy Spirit. The baby received the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth began to speak in the power of the Holy Spirit. She also in the power of the Holy Spirit knew immediately that Mary was carrying the Lord. And he said, why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to my house? You know, deep mysteries can only be revealed through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's no way Elizabeth would have known from the very first day of Mary's conception that Mary was pregnant and that she was going to give birth to a son of God and said it was through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, when Peter, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say I am? He says, you are Elijah. Don't say you are Elijah. You are one of the prophets. He asked them, who do you say I am? And Peter responded, you are Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The one that is to come to say. And Jesus said, true. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the Holy Spirit. If we as believers and as children of God, begin to count and rely on the Holy Spirit, we will begin to get directions in all that we do. I wish today as we hear the word of God, you will not have in your heart, you begin to apply the wisdom and inspiration derived from this word. Amen. Remember that by the time Mary visited Elizabeth, she had received the Holy Spirit. And when Elizabeth heard the voice, both the child and the mother became filled with the Holy Spirit. And she began to prophesy. The Holy Spirit, the life of a believer, makes him or her, makes him or her to become like Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you want the Holy Spirit? We all need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The question I started to ask myself was, do people know me when I, when, when I come in contact with people? Do they feel the power of the Holy Spirit operating in me? What do they feel? When you are in contact with people, are they able to identify you as a child of God or as somebody else? Amen. Let us also see what Jesus said, what the Bible said about Jesus and what he said about himself. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Luke chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible recorded and said, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, Amen, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan. I was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus himself, even though he is God, but while operating on earth here, he needed the infilling of the Holy Spirit to be able to fulfill his purpose and destiny. And Jesus full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan. I was led. Am I being led by the Holy Spirit or by the flesh or emotion? Are you being led by the Holy Spirit or you are being led by flesh or emotion? Amen. Because Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, look at what he said about himself and his mission in Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 22. Luke chapter 4, 14 to 22. And Jesus returned in the power. Amen. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. 
and a report about him went throughout the surrounding country. He did not return with his certificate. He did not return with his money, positions, but he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit, his fame, his report, went throughout all the surrounding country. Amen. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth where he was brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. Amen. This is what Jesus said about himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He didn't say because I'm the Son of God I have been empowered to proclaim good news to the poor. He said because the Spirit of God is upon me. I have been anointed to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All eyes and all the eyes in the synagogue feast at him. Amen. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious word that we are coming from his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Amen. When you begin to operate in the spirit, those that know you before, that used to commonize you before, they begin to have regard for you because you'll be operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because your decisions and actions will be guided by the Holy Spirit. You command respect and recognition in the sight of men. Christ returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the report about him went throughout all surrounding country. That is what the Holy Spirit does. It is the Holy Spirit that projects a man. It is the Holy Spirit that recommends someone for blessing and gives direction. He is the one that not announces someone. He can announce you in your career. He can announce you in every field. Praise the Lord. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. If we want to be relevant in our chosen careers and in all that we do. In verse 16, the Bible says he went to the place of worship as it was his custom. As it was his habit. Going to the church. Now, I want to encourage you, my dear brothers and sisters, form a habit, a culture of coming to the church, going to the church, attending our Bible studies, and learn from God. That was his habit. And when he went to the church, he did not just sit down, he participated. He was given a scroll to read. And it was in the process of reading the scroll that all that the scripture has written about him was proclaimed. That the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to bring good news to the people, to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That was Jesus, led by the Spirit. 
So if you want to become like Christ, taking cue from what we are on of preach last week, you need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. Like I told you, I kept reflecting on the message. And I kept asking myself, am I like Jesus? Do I resemble Jesus in conversation? Do I resemble Jesus in my conduct? Do I resemble Jesus in my reaction to issue? Am I being led by the Holy Spirit or am I being led by sight and by emotions? Amen. From the scripture above, that is from Luke chapter 4, where we read, you will discover what Jesus was said to do. The mandate that God gave to him, why God released him from heaven to earth. It was in Galilee, verses 18 to 19, to preach good news to the poor. So that the poor and the captive should be set free. So that the eyes of those that are spiritually blind will be opened. So that those that are oppressed by the demons will be set free. And to proclaim the goodness of God. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit in order to become like Jesus in character, in love, and to be able to fulfill our individual purpose. God has a purpose for creating you. He has a purpose for creating me. That I'm alive today is an indication that God still needs me. That you are alive today is a proof that God still needs you. Somebody said the life that you have is a gift from God to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. Praise the Lord. The life that you have is a gift from God to you. And what you do with it is your gift back to God. What are you doing with your life? There is no life that will be meaningful with and able to achieve its purpose without the Holy Spirit. Now, and join us and encourage us to seek the Holy Spirit. Let's see what Peter said about Jesus and the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 10, 34 to 43. Peter's witness about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 10, 34 to 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality. Amen. God is not partial. He does not like the white. He does not prefer the white-skinned man to the dark-skinned man. He does not prefer the tall guy to the short guy. He does not show partiality in all that he does. All he expects one to do is to be faithful to him. I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Amen. This was Peter, Apostle Peter's witness about Jesus and about God. That everyone that does what is right is acceptable to God. It doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your, con your, your, your status in the society, your educational status does not matter. Your skin color does not matter. What matters to God is anyone that fears Him, that reverence Him, and comes away from iniquity. Such a one will be accepted. And for the word that He sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace. Through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. You saw in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said he was to preach good news. And Peter is reporting here, being an eyewitness and a follower of Christ, that Jesus did preach good news to the poor. Amen. Verse 37. You yourself know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed. From the beginning of the Jesus ministry began from the baptism of John. After his baptism in Jordan, River Jordan, he started to walk and do what God asked him to do 
which include preaching the good news, opening the eyes of the blind, setting the captives free, and proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. And this is the same message he has asked us to preach. The good news to the poor. That is why from this pulpit, by the grace of God, as long as we live, we we'll continue to speak the word of God undiluted and without compromise. And the Lord gives us the grace that you can be set free. That you will be accepted if you fear the Lord and you accept him. Amen. Verse 37. Sorry, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? How God, not how God blessed him, but how God anointed him. Today, a lot of believers are seeking blessing. God bless me. God bless me. God favor me. God open doors. What is most important in the heart of God for us is to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can fulfill our purpose. And he said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. So, it is your soul that should prosper first before financial, material, and other blessings will begin to be distributed to you. Are we together? Praise the Lord. But today, people seek the material blessings first instead of the word of God, which is able to renew, which is able to protect, and which is able to direct you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about doing good and healing all who be oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Remove the Holy Spirit from the equation. For the life of Jesus, while operating on earth here, his life would be meaningless. And he would not have been able to fulfill his purpose of preaching good news to the poor, of recovering of sight to the blind. He would not have been able to cast out demons and God would not have been with him. So if you want to be able to fulfill your purpose, either in your profession or in your ministerial life, and your daily walk with God, you need the Holy Spirit. So see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. You want to do good, you are not able to do it. Why? It's because the Holy Spirit is not there. And once the Holy Spirit is there, you'll be motivated and encouraged and inspired to do good. Amen. And what did Peter say in verse 39? And we are witnesses to all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Amen. Peter was speaking out of his experience and encounter with Jesus because he was a witness to all that happened and he knew through the influence and power of the Holy Spirit that what made the life of Jesus different was because Jesus had the Holy Spirit. God had anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power and he was able to do good and do all that he was expected to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 42, I'll go to verse 42. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Amen. Jesus, having completed his assignment on earth, has appointed me, has appointed you, has appointed every believer to testify and let the people know that Jesus is going to be the judge of the living and the dead. You will be judged one day, and I will be judged one day. One of my messages two weeks ago or so, I told us three basic facts, three basic truths that will take place. One day, Jesus will come. One day, I will die. One day, Another truth that we should know is that sin kills. The man of God said, The day you announce the death of somebody, know that one day somebody will announce your own. The difference is that you will not be there when your own will be announced, but it will happen one day. 
God has anointed us, has chosen us as a ministry and as an individual at this end time to let people know that sin still kills. That God is not going to change his standard of holiness because in the 21st century, his word remains the same. See, heaven and earth shall pass away. Government may change. Technology may change. But the word of God remains the same. That the soul that sinned and refuses to repent shall die. But the soul that repents, anyone that turns from evil to righteousness will be saved and will be supported by the Holy Spirit to fulfill his or her purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To him or the prophet bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. Everyone that believes in Jesus receives forgiveness. The only way you will not receive forgiveness is if you do not believe. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you are saved and you receive forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Apostle Peter confirmed that Jesus accomplished his purpose and that he was a witness to it in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, which we read before, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, with power, he went about doing good, healing all that were sick. Many of us here want to serve God and fulfill our desires, our destinies in God, but have not been able or are having one challenge or the other. Please let me be frank and honest with you as always, we all need to link up with the Holy Spirit and allow him to direct us. Praise the Lord. We need to link up with the Holy Spirit and allow him to direct us. Praise the Lord. If you want to become like Jesus, live like him, operate like him, pray like him, love like him, Fast like him, you need the Holy Spirit. Because of your own, you can do nothing. Of my own, I can do nothing. Christ is God's gift to humanity for the purpose of salvation. Amen. The Holy Spirit, on the other hand, is God's gift to the church and to whoever desire to fulfill God's purpose in his life. It is only when you believe that you can receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaking to Nicodemus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He that is born of the flesh is of the flesh, but he that is born of the spirit is of the spirit. So we need the Holy Spirit to be able to operate in the capacity and purpose God has created us. Amen. To become like Jesus, we need the Holy Spirit. Christ and, and those before us and our fathers in faith all operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone that chooses to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit in this present and past generation can only survive and fulfill God's purpose in his or her life through the power of the Holy Spirit and thereby becoming like Jesus. Amen. Let all that we do glorify God. Anything that you do in the secular world, in your places of work, in your families, in the church, let it be to glorify God. Your aim should be to glorify God. Amen. The scripture said this about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 to 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Amen. Reading from the ESV, it says, Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offering you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In both offerings and sin offering, you have not taken pleasure. Amen. 
God is more interested in your soul than your tithes and offering. Are we together? Even though your tithes and offering are relevant and important for the growth and the expansion of the kingdom of God, but what is most important to God is your soul. The sacrifice of a sinner is an abomination to God. Are we together? So God does not desire more important, God does not desire your offering and your sacrifices more than your soul. Then I said, Jesus said, then I said, behold, I have come to do your will. Can everyone make this proclamation? I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the books. Can you make the proclamation, the declaration, the affirmation? Lord, I have come to do your will. And all that you have written about me before I was born. When he said this, said the above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and sin offering. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Amen. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. Lord, I want to do your will. All that I want is to do your will. Not to fulfill the will of man or be influenced by man, but to be influenced by a purpose. Amen. And by that, we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. When we offer to do the will of God, we will be sanctified, we will be cleansed, we will be regenerated through the body of Jesus Christ. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will be able to know the will of God concerning every situation and you will be able to take the right decision that will bring glory to God. Amen. Time will fail me to teach more about the Holy Spirit, but by the grace of God, we will continue more exploits and teaching about the Holy Spirit in subsequent sermon. Amen. Remember this. Remember this. If you do not remember any other thing that the Lord has spoken to us today, remember in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I want you to remember it. It's a very short verse. Very short. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen. If you want to resemble Jesus, as your daughter resembles you, or as your son resembles your husband, or as your brother, as you resemble your elder brother, you must be led by the Spirit. For all who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And sons of God resembles God. Amen. Resemble God in character. Constituted by law. Forgiveness. Sanctification. Holiness. Commitment. Desire to fulfill God's purpose. Only those that are led by the Spirit of God. And the sons of God. Are you led by the Spirit? If you are not, you can make a decision today to surrender to the Holy Spirit. If you are, you can deepen your relationship and knowledge of the Holy with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Amen. Thank you for listening. Let us pray. And this song I want to share with us. Lord, I want. To be like Jesus in my heart. If you know it, sing with me. If you don't know it, please learn it. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. 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 Lord, I want 
to be like Jesus in my heart. 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 Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. When Elizabeth, when Mary visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth became filled with the Holy Spirit. I asked myself, do people see the Holy Spirit in me? Do people see me and immediately know that I am a child of God? Without talking, without sharing, without a bad Jesus says. Without a formal dressing, come out of ministers of God. Do people see the Holy Spirit in me? Do they receive the Holy Spirit? I guess some years ago I gave a lady a ride. She entered the car, she looked around and said, Sir, are you a pastor? I said, I'm not. So why did you? I said, I preach. I said, why did you ask? So there is an air in this car, the atmosphere in this car shows that you are there. Those sticker in the car, there was no Bible on my dashboard. The Holy Spirit was present that day. Can it be a continuous thing? Yes, of course. The people will see you and identify the Holy Spirit in you. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, brethren. Ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit and you want to be like Jesus. If that's the only prayer you want to pray today and throughout this week, let it be. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. We have been taught that we cannot be like Jesus unless we have the Holy Spirit. You cannot be like Jesus unless you have the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter said, I perceive, I understand that God shows no partiality. And in every nation of the world, anyone that fears God and obeys him will be blessed. Ask God to bless you this week. To fill you with the Holy Spirit. Father, I don't need any other thing this week. I don't need any other thing apart from your presence. He said, Moses, value the presence of God. He said, if your presence does not go with me, I will not go. He said, if I have found favor with you, let your presence go with me. And God said, my presence will go with you. And once you have the presence of God, every other thing will naturally follow. Lord, this week, and all my life, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be directed by the Holy Spirit. I want to operate in the Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord, not to do anything on my own without consultation with the Holy Spirit. Because I want to be like Jesus. The Holy Spirit was what made a difference in the life of Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Anoint me, oh God, with your Holy Spirit and with power. That I'll be able to preach your word. I want to heal the sick, cast out demons, open the eyes of the blind, and preach the acceptable here of the Lord. Help us, Lord. Spirit of God, come afresh on us. Come afresh on us. Break us. Mold us. Feed us. And use us to your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I lift up everyone that is under the ocean of my voice this morning. And those that will listen to this message hereafter, I bring them before you. I ask, Father, because you do not show partiality, because you give the Holy Spirit to those that believe in you, I pray, Father, that it cause their heart to understand your word, to believe your word, to accept your word, and then fill us all with the Holy Spirit and with power, that we must showcase your glory wherever we go and whatever we do. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray before you all those that ask me to pray for them, whatever their challenge, their situation may be, I pray for them this morning, oh God, those that are sick, heal them. Those that possess, deliver them. Those that are unemployed, provide for them. Those that are in school, grant them wisdom to read and understand and grant them sources. In the name of Jesus Christ, those that are pregnant, oh God, help them to carry their pregnancy to them and deliver safely unto your glory and to your honor. Those that have decided the fruits of the womb, oh God, I ask that you visit them as you visited Mary, as you visited Elizabeth, fill them with the Holy Spirit and bless them with babies that are filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are passing through crisis in their marriages, I pray for them, oh God, that you will visit them and restore hope to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the government of this country and all the countries of the world. The Lord will give them wisdom to administer their offices unto your glory and to your honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bring before you this morning, O oh God, all the ministers of the gospel. For that pray fresh anointing upon each and every one of them, O oh God, that they will be able to fulfill your ministry of reconciliation. The Lord will be able to teach and preach the word of God by extending the ministry established by Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for those that are having financial crisis. Father, you are the great provider. You asked Peter to go to the sea to cast the net, and the first uh, hook he cast brought out a fish with a coin in the mouth. There is nothing impossible for you to do. I pray for those in need of finances, O God, you that supply our needs according to your riches in glory, supply them. In the name of Jesus Christ, as many, O God, that are under the attack of the enemies, the Bible says you set forth your word, you heal their diseases, and deliver them. This morning, O oh God, as your word has come, I pray it will minister deliverance to those that are possessed so in the name of Jesus Christ and bring healing to those that are sick in the name of Jesus Christ. That your word, O oh God, will revive our souls. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I decree and declare, O oh God, that this week will be a week of blessing, a week of deeper relationship with you and more understanding of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone shall say, Amen. Shall we please stand up and share the grace? Amen. Lift up your hands and let's pray. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Declare with your mouth, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the mighty God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance upon you, fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone shall say, Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. At the end of the uh, this time, we have coffee downstairs. Please.